Okay, I figured it out. Sorry, everyone. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Hi, Kathy. Hello, everyone. How are Hi, Kathy. we? Kathy. Hello. I've unmuted board members, Melissa, Beth, Cindy, myself, I, and Marsha, I will ask to unmute you. Okay? The board members are unmuted. She's asking her. Okay. So Marsha is still. Okay. Well, we will con we will move on. And welcome to our June 27 monthly board meeting. I call to order the meeting at 5:04 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 3:04 Belize Time. Um, the meeting was posted on our website. And it was also sent out by email on May the 28th of 2021. Um, I believe everyone received the minutes in a very timely manner for May 23, 2021. Has everyone taken the time, I believe, to review them? And um, are there any, um, and if you're all in favor, could I have a motion to accept the minutes as presented? Somebody. I motion to accept the minutes as written. This is Cindy. I, Cindy, and may I have somebody second that? I second it. It's Beth. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So the state of the community is very short. Um, as you know, when you signed into the meeting, you were advised that it would be recorded. And the if you wish to speak, just put your hand up and I will unmute you for the um, non-board members. All I really have to say is that from what I gather, the community is in great shape financially and the green spaces are being well kept. I would also like to mention that an updated video was sent by a blast email and we did receive some very nice positive comments from lot owners. So for those of you who looked at the video, it was very well done. Thank you for all your hard work on that. Um, Beth, Brian, Paul Prescott and anyone else who was there and for all the hard work you've continued to do within our community. Okay, so now we will move on to the treasurer report. Cindy. Okay, um, we had the normal operating expenses for this month. Good news is Excella was able to recover $5,894.55, but that does leave us still leave us 65 lots in arrears with a balance due of $387,446. But with the Excello coming in, we now have liquid assets totaling $100,724.16. That's all I've got. Okay, Cindy, that does include a little bit of money that we kind of have in um, dormant status at a Atlantic Bank in Belize that we were unable to get at um, because they want your firstborn and whoever to move that money out. But we will attempt to do that one day. Um, any questions for Cindy regarding the treasurer report? I know we, it sounds like we have a lot of money, but that does, does include the $30,000 that we have in reserve that most homeowner associations, just like condo, condo associations are supposed to have. So I just wanna make sure everybody understands that. So we have about 70,000. Um, we know it's a lot of money sitting there and hopefully we can, we will be spending some of that shortly. Um, so after that little um, recap, any questions for Cindy? I don't see any hands up Cindy. So we will move on to the committee status updates. Mm -hmm. And if we could have um, Paul Lorisella. Sure. Um... 
This month, the EAB only had three requests, um, one from Rennie, Marini, and she has to extend the extending retaining wall behind her house. And McGregor asked to level the pathway directly behind her house and possibly extend her retaining wall. And both those uh, requests were approved. Um, the Sickle Smiths presented plans for a small building on their adjacent lot and removal of one tree. And that was also approved. That's it. Okay. Thanks very much, Paul. And I, I know the board has asked that when those are completed that they let us know so that a final um, review can be done, I understand correctly? Right. Everything's been passed on to the board. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for anybody of the EAB committee? Okay. <clears throat> Show, don't see any hands. So let's move on to the gardens and we have Beth Weary. Okay, um, in the greenhouse right now, we have tomatoes and sweet peppers growing. Um, in the big vegetable bed, we have green beans, zucchini, onions, cucumbers, watermelon, romaine lettuce, habanero peppers, broccoli, red potatoes, cilantro, radishes, red lettuce, and up at the upper vegetable garden, we have black beans and okra and some papayas. And we dug out five small little Suriname cherry trees that were sprouted around the big cherry tree. And we have them in little pots and we're waiting until they become uh, transplantable and then we will put them in the garden. Um, I'd like to thank Paul and Cindy Loricella for donating two fall avocado trees and a mango. And there was a situation I'd like to address so everybody knows that there was a large zucchini in the vegetable garden that would have been put out on Wednesday for garden shares, but was picked by someone yesterday, unfortunately. And they also allowed their small dog to run through the vegetable garden that is fenced in to keep the animals out. And it also appears that they picked some black beans and also let the dog run through that vegetable garden. So now we will lock the vegetable garden gate. And I just think that that's very unfortunate that we have to do that because a community member feels entitled to go and pick whatever they want, whenever they want. That's not how the garden works. And they also cut off some chives, which were not ready to be picked. It was not on the whiteboards. And on the whiteboard in the garden share shed, we have a list of things that community members can go and pick at their free will. It won't be put out for garden share. They can just go and pick. And chives is not one of them, but they felt entitled once again to go and cut them down. So that's all I got. Well, Beth, I'm just gonna make a quick comment here. That is just so disrespectful. If it was a community member, which obviously it was, um, I don't understand the mentality behind doing anything like that. However, I do want to say that you there, the produce that you mentioned is just amazing that you have available for people and you work all work very hard, especially like you said, Beth, Brian, Paul, Cindy, all the rest of you um, that are there, there's no words to explain somebody doing that. Um, do you have any comments from anybody else that's on the call, please? This is Cindy. I mean, the, the cutting of the chives is kind of irritating to me because we have tried since I've got here in October, I've tried the herb garden and the soil here is just not equipped for it. So we've had to raise the garden beds and try this and that. And they were finally starting to take off. And I don't know if the one plant that they severely cut is going to recover. We only had three chive plants to begin with, hoping that we could start a whole you know, bed where everybody could just go and get what they needed for their, their cooking and their pleasure. But it's almost futile. Yes, it really is unfortunate. The other thing is obviously there's a dog running unleashed 
on the green spaces, which is also should not be allowed. And that's unfortunate as well. This, there, I don't, I wish we could come up with some guidelines as to how we can eliminate this, but it just seems that whatever we do, something else happens. Any comments from anybody else? You can raise your hand. I don't see any hands. Okay, we will move on to the roads and maintenance and we have Brian. Hello everyone. Uh, yes, today I, I wanna to discuss the two buildings uh, that the HOA owns. One is the office or the Bean Bell House, whichever you know it as. And the other one is the garden bodega. That's the white structure. And they're both deteriorating. Uh, the Bean Bell House uh, was not cared for properly under the last uh, people in charge, the last board, and it was not sprayed. And we had uh, termite skin in it and uh, destroy the building in the sense of speaking. It's not worth fixing up. I mean, the building does not suit us. We can put up a small structure of concrete that would be fireproof and not capable of being broke into where, because this is where we house our solar and our uh, safety equipment, meaning cameras. So you know, I'm going to meet with Menno and have him give us a price on two buildings because at the bodega, what that is, is that that building is just made out of road dirt. And then they turned around and they poured this big bond beam on top, solid concrete. So you got like all these thousands of pounds of concrete compressing this road dirt. And, and the walls are actually starting to buckle because the facade is starting to, to, you know, explode off in the sense of speaking. And there's really no repairing it. So at the same time, if we could get a small structure up there to house, once again, you know, we have all our expensive equipment the building we have now is so easy to break into. You know, we put up a concrete structure with a good steel door and and call it done. So I will meet with Mano and have him get me some prices together on this. And I think this coming week, uh, we're going to make a movie to show people what I'm speaking of. So people outside of this uh, board meeting right now can see uh, what, we're, what we're talking about. I think that's a great idea. Do I have comments from anybody else? Because this is um, your HO money at work to protect uh, our investments. Well, I think building well, repair. I think that's oh. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, Cindy. It's Melissa. I, I think it's a great idea. I mean, Brian, you're obviously you know, more than capable of assessing whether or not a structure can be saved. And um, it sounds like the one where the cement was poured right on, on the, the road dirt is a safety hazard as well. And I know it's still being used to a certain degree. Uh, and, and it's definitely an eyesore as well. I, I, it seems like we could get a better structure in there um, that could be a multi-purpose building and that could be more secure. And we're finding more and more that we need more security, unfortunately. So I think it's a great idea. Thank you, Melissa. What I was going to say is that the, as a board, and, and these are our buildings, then they've been let go. I mean, for so long that it's there is no, you know, we've been trying to patch it up, but there is no more patching. And it's to the point now where we have to just right. make a decision. And with the help of Excella, you know, helping raise our funds, maybe it's time that we put forth some money to start taking care of the things that belong to everybody. I agree. And, I agree and it's, well. it's, it's infrastructure, you know, it's as important yeah. as, as the roads. I mean, if we can get our infrastructure yeah. where we need it, you know, then you put the swimming pool in. You know the pleasure things, right. but we we don't have we don't. Have, there's so many things in the infrastructure that is not completed or that is right. That if, if we spend the money that way, it's a good investment for the community. I feel personally. I agree, absolutely. 
Um, this is Beth. I just wanted to add that the idea would be to have the buildings built and then have the old ones tore down since they are housing valuable equipment. And then the company that, um, that we would have do the work would take the old buildings, demolish them and take them away. To me, that's a great idea. Yep. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I, all of you people that are there are already doing so much for the community. Why should you be burdened with taking away garbage? Well, exactly. And I'm getting too old to get up on a two-story roof and start tearing the tin off of it and, and lifting the rafters. And like I said, structurally safe. It's not structurally safe. So when you start taking a building, you start yeah. dismantling it. That's when you can have a collapse because, you know, that whole building works together. And when you start taking pieces away from it and you have pieces that are failing, you could have a collapse. So I think it's best to let a company come in that has insurance and can do it properly and let them take the risk in doing it. And I agree. And we also need a company that's got the equipment. Exactly. Yes. Kathy, Mr. Spruitt has his hand up. Oh, thank you. I have. There we go. Can you? There you go, Tony or Shelley. Yeah. Just a quick question: When you were making reference to uh, the need for increased security, is that an issue with uh, people trying to break into? for the equipment or is that in reference to what you were talking about the uh, the garden sheds or the gardens? I think it, um, Shelly, for me, it's for both. Um, and more recently, yeah. our own, some, some of our own community members just seeming to come in and do whatever. I mean, it, it's so unfortunate, it's hurtful, it's, I don't, I, there's not words to explain it, but we did have, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but we did have some outsiders come in and take some equipment uh, about a year and a year and a half ago, maybe. Correct me, Beth, or anybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. October, I believe it was October of 2019, when the bodega and the garden share shed were broken into. And Shelly, that's when the gate went in place because all this stuff started to happen, all the, you know, uh, Rini got got armed robbed and all this stuff started to happen. That's when we put in cameras and the, and the gate like that. But, you know, it's funny now. We actually have the cameras and we're actually locking everything because of certain community members. It has nothing to do with the people outside our gate. Right. It strictly has to do with certain community members. It's really sad. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for clarifying that because I, I was hopeful that the uh, the cameras and the gates were... Um, minimizing any outside. So that's great. Thank you. Shelly, to the best of my knowledge, that has. But Excellent. Un unfortunately, nothing is ever foolproof, but we do our best. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, so Brian, what you're going to do then is take a, a video, which I think would be very much appreciated by all lot owners. It's up to them then how, how engaged they wanna be, but take a good video of the two buildings before and share it so that they know where their money's being spent. And then I know you will do a video once when they're completed and everything is finalized. And then um, Menno to give us a, a quote on what this all is and we will go forward. All right, I can do all that, that sounds good. Any questions from anybody else? I mean, Menno has done work for us before. He's very responsible, um, very thorough, very knowledgeable. Um, we just don't know of anybody else down there that, that can, can do this. It, it, the problem being, I mean, since we are a corporation, the problem being is, you know, we can get neighborhood kids in to do stuff. But, you know, you're accepting liabilities you're doing this, they don't, they do not have the equipment to tear down a building. So, you know, it's all done by hand, which is very risky, like I just explained. And, you know, we have to do things on the safe side too. 
I fully agree. Does everyone else agree to that on the board? Yes, yes. I do. Ms. Absolutely. Ms. Marsha, yeah. I agree. Marsha agrees, Beth agrees, Melissa agrees. So we all agree. So let's move forward. Sounds good. I'll get some prices. Thank you, Brian. Now under the discussions, we have the ongoing Forest Hill Drive in the easement. I'm going to give everybody that's on the call today an update. Back on April the 13th of this year, we, we had, re well, just before that, there was an email sent to our attorney, Rubble and Co, asking them about preparing this easement and we asked for a time frame, and they got back and said that they could file this in two weeks if the owner of the property was in Belize. However, if they were outside of Belize and to allow for FedEx, um, we should allow one month to be on the safe side. So then on April the 19th, the board sent the trust funds to the attorney to proceed with the document. Um, the board sent an email, a follow-up email on April the 29th. No response was, was received. But because of COVID and being, um, not wanting to be kind of harassing them, nothing was done until May the 17th when another email was sent to them asking for an update and the status on this. We did receive a response that same day that the documents are being prepared and the attorney's office requested forwarding the um, mailing information for Louis and Mike Saunders. And that info was sent the same day as well. Nothing was heard from them. Um, so on May the 21st, Another email was sent asking if the documents were prepared, if they were going to send them to the board for review before they sent them to Mike Saunders and Louis Tremblay, but we got no response. Again, another follow-up, May 31st, no response. We were getting frustrated here as the board. So a following email was sent on June the 3rd and it went to the attorney and I will read you the email. The BIB Property Owners Association Inc. Board is very disappointed that no draft of the filing notice was received. In your email of April 13, 2021, you stated the following. We can file this in two weeks if the property owner is in Belize. It will be 3.5 weeks, three and a half, if documents will be signed Please allow up to one month to be on the safe side. Well, as you can see, this is now two months, nothing. So the board, re so the email went on to say, the board requests that the fund sent for this engagement be returned so we can proceed with other arrangements. When returning the funds, please include the additional $15 incoming wire expense because you're not doing your due diligence here. Please acknowledge receipt of this email and advise when return of payment has been processed. Regards the board. I'm not sure, but they gave no apology, nothing regarding being non-reactive to this request. So they sent the funds back and they were received into our account on June the 16th. So, the update here is that we as a board are pursuing some other options, some other attorneys. And trust me, this is our number one priority. We are doing our best, but when you have an attorney who doesn't want to cooperate for whatever reason, it baffles me, but we have got to move forward. This is, as I said, priority, and we've got to move forward quickly because we need that road fixed. Any questions on that? From anybody? Comments? 
Kathy, it's Melissa. It, it's my understanding that you have um, secured uh, a different attorney to pursue this. Is that correct? We are in the process of, of um, communicating with one, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Kathy? Yes? Uh, when, when we make the movie on uh, the two buildings, do you want me to incorporate uh, some of these road problems down here so people can see exactly what all the problems are down in that we're trying, that the board is working on. You know what, Brian, and I think I'm hoping the rest of the board will agree, but I, it definitely can't hurt. Okay. I mean, this community, it's, it's the community, lot owners money that we are responsible for, and we want to improve the community. We want to move it forward. So I think all the information we can give them and show them, the better. Well, I, I will incorporate that and I should incorporate the fact that, you know, these turnarounds at the end of, end of these roads, you can't turn around on them. People can't even build on Hallow Hill. The road is so mm -hmm. narrow, there's no place you could ever park. I mean, I have no idea what you do with that mess, but eventually it's going to fall back into the HOA because somebody is going to want to build up there and they got, a, they got an eight foot road to get up and no place to park. Right. You know, we, we, we take on Parrot's Cove, that whole cul de sac is on somebody else's property. There's so much of this. You go to the end of River Road, or yeah, the end of Forest in the river, that whole turn is on somebody else's property. So if, if they would actually build a fence there, anybody that owns any property down River Road would not have access to it. And I don't know exactly. if people are aware of any of this stuff. So I will incorporate some of this into the into the next movie so people understand what we're talking about. Thank you. That's a great idea, Brian. Thank you. Brian, I think it's a good idea because when people are sitting at home just listening in, you know, whatever, they just see it as, a, as a, an easement, a piece of paper. They don't see it that we can't fix the road until we have that easement. And that road is I mean, a guest was in the building in the neighborhood the other day, and I was trying to come up, and he wouldn't move over. So I had to, I had to stop going up the hill, and then I could. I, thank God you had built in a couple runway ramp things, so I could back down to that to get started to get back up the hill. Because the way the water is gullied out, there was no nowhere for me to go because he didn't move over. Thank you. Marsha? Yes. Yep. Did you have anything you want to add? I think I should include the Forest uh, River Road as well in the video. Shows how bad it is. <laughs> I'm sure that can be done. I'll leave that up to Brian and Beth and Paul and whomever all is involved. Cindy and Paul. I mean, you guys are are, are doing great. Just keep up the good work. We support you. Now, before we go on, anything else? Sorry, anything else? Okay. What I wanted to do now is in our last meeting, um, we decided to replace our secretary who could um, do uh, carry the responsibilities of the secretarial job. And we had Marsha come forward and volunteer. And I want to take this time to thank you, Marsha, for putting yourself forward and taking on the responsibility of the secretarial position. We really appreciate that. Thank you. I'm glad to be a part of it. Yes. Thank you very much. All right. Is there anything else anybody wanted to discuss? I don't see any hands, so this is going to be a nice short meeting. I want to thank everybody for your time. It's all volunteer. We realize that. These are all doing a good job. Our next meeting, when would that be a good time?
How be may I put forward July 18? I'm not That's gonna be around yeah, that on, on the 18th until August 1st, going so, back to the States. Okay. Do we wanna move it to August? Is there any, there's nothing real pressing. We'll keep everybody updated or send a blast email if something moves forward very quickly regarding Forest Hill Drive. And Brian, if you get the quotes in, we can have, we can do that through the board. Um, is everyone in agreement to maybe go into August the 8th? Yeah, that's fine. I think that's fine. Okay. That works for us. Pardon? It's, it's Cindy, it works for us. Okay, Marsha? Yes, that's great. Okay, so we will pencil in August <clears throat> the 8th at 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 3 p.m. Belize Time. Okay. okay, may I have someone make a motion to adjourn the meeting? I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. May I have somebody second? Ooh, I'll second. Thank you, Marsha. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest Thank of you. your day. Thank you. Bye, guys. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.